Welcome to a Not Avenue Christian Church video production. Not Avenue Christian Church is a non-denominational, multi-ethnic church located at 315 South Not Avenue, a quarter mile south of Lincoln in Anaheim, California. We hope you will be blessed and encouraged by today's message. We are continuing in our series, Live Connected. And the icons behind me, as you can see, live connected with God. And there's a lot of us that has done that already, the profession of your faith. And then we move on to connecting with believers where we're in small groups and we're, we're uh, gathering around people that will encourage us, that will lift us up, that will challenge us, that will love on us, just like we just showed earlier. And that is just a glimpse of what a small group can do is where people will pray with you. And in the last couple of weeks, we we're talking about connecting with serving. And, and God wants us to serve, be the hands and feet of Jesus here at this church. But now we are going into live connected with community. And a lot of times when we think about living connected with community, some of us are probably thinking, oh, no. It is one of those things where we're going to talk about go out and preach God, preach the gospel in, into some random people, go on a street corner and tell them about Jesus. And some of you are probably thinking, that's not me. And that's not in me. And for a lot of us, we feel like that we disqualify ourselves because we probably don't know the gospel. We don't know uh, from Genesis to Revelation. We're not really there theologically. We probably are shy. We're introverted. We don't feel like and I'm, uh, going out there and telling people about Christ. But sometimes when there's an opportunity to evangelize, we're the ones that would probably say, no, not me. I'm just going to just pray for that team to go out. You know, there was a time when uh, we were passing out cards in the neighborhood, and it was for our Easter service. And we were called to go out into the neighborhoods, and me and my wife went to the neighborhood down the street over here. I was so excited because that's who I am. I, I want to go out there, and I want to tell people about Christ. I want to invite them to the church, and we go out to the neighborhood. My wife was in the car and goes, this is not me. This is not me. I don't like doing this. I said, honey, just be with me. And I remember getting this card out and we're walking into the car, to the house. I'm ready to ring the doorbell. I look back and my wife is not with me. I look back and I, I kind of look outside and go, come on, honey. And she's like slowly walking to the house. And right before I ring the doorbell, my wife is now with me. I ring the doorbell. A guy answers the door. And this is all we had to say. Hi, my name is Albert. I'm from Not Avenue Christian Church. We'd love to invite you to our Easter service that is happening in a couple of weeks. And we hope to see you there. That was it. I ring the doorbell, guy opens the door, I go, and I just started to stutter. Oh, and then my wife comes up behind me and goes, yeah, that's my husband, and I'm Belinda. I just want to let you know we're from not having Christian church. And I was like, what? And I'm thinking to myself, while I know it's in me, and my wife was in the car saying, this is not in me, it's in her. You see, when you say yes to Jesus, and the Holy Spirit resides in your heart, in your life, it is in you. So I entitled this message, Is It In You? Kind of took it from the Gatorade because it's got an awesome campaign slogan about, is it in you? When we drink Gatorade and, and you see this next slide, it, it, it comes out of your pores. And when Jesus resides in your heart and he's in you, it should come out of you as well. And that's who we should be as believers is that kind of slogan. I remember playing baseball and I remember eating, uh, chewing uh, big league chew. We used to put a big wad just like the baseball players and spit like crazy in the dugout. And one day I remember one of our teammates comes in and says, hey, I got some Gatorade gum. So we spit out the big league chew and we started putting all these uh, pads, all these chewing gum of Gatorade gum in our mouth thinking it was going to give us an added home run or an added speed. But if you ever ate Gatorade gum, it loses flavor like in three seconds. And it's like you're just chewing a plastic spoon. But we thought it was like a, a, a performance enhancing drug. We thought we we're going to win the game because we're eating. But that's also in the same way. When we accept Jesus Christ, we have that same excitement knowing that we can do all things through Christ Jesus. Because he's in us. And he helps us to perform some of the things that we can't even think about doing. So we're going to be talking about connecting with community. One of the things about connecting with community is that do you know your community? 
What community are we talking about? So in your outline, it says, is it in you to serve your community? What's your community look like? It's your home. How is the gospel preached and representative, represented in your home? At your work, how is it being represented at your work? That's familiar to you. That's your community. Your, your kids' school, that's your community. Your dance, uh, the, the dance school or dance place that you take your, your daughters to, that's your community. The sports teams that you take your, your, your kids to, that's your community. The grocery store that you frequently go to and you know the che uh, check cashier, uh, the, the check stand person, that's your community. The person that cuts your hair, that's your community. The person that does your nails, that's your community. I remember preaching to um, our young at heart um, a congregation on Tuesday, a young at heart Bible study. I remember telling them, I challenged them with these thank you cards. I said to them, I said, I want you to do this. Because there are certain places that you frequently go to. Whether it's a restaurant that you know the waitress that always gives you your, your food. Write a card and just say thank you to them and say that you'll be praying for them. The person that does your hair, why don't you go to them and write a, write a, a thank you card just saying, thank you for all the years that you've done my hair. And I just want to just say, I'll be, I'm, be, I'm praying for you. Just those simple things because it's in you. If you're a believer today, it should be in you to just drop a seed into a person that, don't, don't, that doesn't know Christ. Crazy things were happening in the book of Acts. And today, since the day of Pentecost, since the day that Jesus left, we are what we call the age of the Spirit or the Holy Spirit. It's no longer Jesus walking with us in bodily form, but he comes into us as believers and things were happening in the book of Acts where Jesus goes into the believers and causes them to move and causes them to, to react to the things of God. And they become the eyes of God. They become the heart of God. They become the hands and feet of God. And now he's calling us as a church to be mobilized as, as well, to put, faith to, uh, to put feet to our faith. And things were happening after Pentecost and the church started to explode. And a great numbers of people were, were accepting Jesus Christ. And there was also great problems happening at the same time. You see here at Not Avenue Christian Church we have on Thursday is our pantry ministry. is where our community comes here and they get food or any resources that we have to offer. And not only that, once a month we do this thing called community supper. Where people come and we feed them a dinner. And that's what was happening in the book of Acts. They were telling the disciples, hey, you need to come help us because some of the other people in this church are not being evenly distri distributed some of the goods and service that, that, we, that we need. And the disciples were saying, no, well, we can't leave preaching the word of God and praying, so we're going to set up some guys to take on this task. And in Acts chapter 6, verses 3 to 5, it says, select from among you seven men of good reputation. Full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Shouldn't that be the requirement if we want to serve God? That we would be full, of, that we would have a good reputation, full of the Spirit and of wisdom. But right in the middle of those two, wisdom and reputation, is what makes you have a good reputation. What gives you wisdom is the Holy Spirit. That should be in the life of the believer. And those other two things should take care of itself as long as you are following Christ. And it continues to say in, in verse 4, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and in the ministry of the word. That's what the apostles were called to do. And then it says here, they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and Holy Spirit, and Philip. And there were some other guys there, but we're going to land on this guy named Philip. Because it was in him. And the question for you, church, is this. Is it in you? Is the Holy Spirit in you to move when he calls you to move? To love when he calls you to love? To comfort when he calls you to comfort? To encourage when he calls you to encourage? And I'm going to talk about three things about what, is, what the Holy Spirit does in a believer or in the world. Number one, in, uh, I'm sorry, John chapter 16 verses 7 and 8 says this. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. Who is the helper? It's the Holy Spirit. And I will send him to you. And, he, and when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, it should convict the world. How many, let me kind of give you a small sample size of what I mean when it says it should convict the world of sin. 
How many times have you, have you had a conversation with somebody knowing that they knew that you were a Christian? As they're conversating, all of a sudden they say, they say a bad word. They go, oh, sorry about that. I shouldn't have said that. Why do you think they did that? It's because they see your life different and your life is convicting them. Not condemning them. We don't go around telling them, hey, you're going to hell. No. Let your life convict people by the way you live and the person that you serve. Then it talks about that it should convict them of righteousness. Because a believer is dependent on Jesus. But when an unbeliever is dependent on their self-reliance on themselves, of themselves. They have self-righteousness. They think they can handle everything. They can handle their troubles. They don't need anybody. But our life should look at that. They should see our life and, and realize we don't have a dependence on ourselves. We have a dependence on Jesus Christ that helps us get through those tough things that go on in our life. And that's what our life should look like. It should come out of us. And another one is that of judgment. You can leave today, you go to your rest, go, go, go out to eat, go to your neighbors, and if you ask them, after you leave this earth, where are you going to go, heaven or hell? The majority would say heaven. Right? The majority would say heaven. Why? It's because they're making up their own righteousness. They're making up their own reality of their judgment after it's all uh, said and done. And they realize, I'm a good person. But according to the scriptures, believers, we understand it's not just about being a good person. It's not about being a person that is, is not hurting anybody or harming anybody, stealing anything. It's about your heart. If your heart is not right with Jesus, then your judgment is only one way. But if your heart is for Jesus, you have a different judgment. It's a judgment when he comes to you and gives you that, those awesome words, my good and faithful servant, come into my rest. So that's what it should look like. So what does it look like when, this, when the Spirit comes into the believer, uh, the work of the Spirit in a believer? But in John chapter 16, verses 13 to 14 says, but when he, the Spirit, comes, he will guide you into all truth. So it's not so much as that you have to figure out this Bible. He will guide you into all truth. Then it says here, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me. You see, when the Spirit comes into a believer, your life should be glorifying God. It shouldn't be glorifying anything else. When people start to see you, they should see Christ in you. They should no longer see you anymore. They start to see the righteousness of Christ in you. It should glorify God. These are the things that we have to understand. These are the things that when the Spirit comes upon you, your life should be different. Another thing it says here is in Acts 1.8, it says when the spirit moves in a believer, it says, but you will receive power. For a lot of us here today, we're thinking, you know what, man, I don't know if I can go out and tell random people about Christ. But he says right here, when the spirit comes, he will give you power. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall be witnesses. What God is saying to you is you got to be a witness in your family, in your homes, on the sports teams that your kids are a part of, the dance teams that your kids are a part of, the schools, your neighborhoods, wherever you go, you need to be a witness for Christ. And that's what the Spirit does in us. And he says both in Jerusalem and Judea. You see, for the Jewish person, Jerusalem and Judea was their neighborhood, was their, their community. And Philip became the first one to go out of Jerusalem to preach the gospel. And it, and it continues. There's a progression here. Not only does God want you to start where you're at right now, whether it's your family, your workplace, or wherever people know you, he also wants you to go into unfamiliar places. Because it says here, also in Samaria and even to the remote parts of the earth. You see, God wants to move you some, uh, at one time out of what is familiar to you to somewhere unfamiliar to you. Because God wants you to trust him. And he wants to stretch your heart. He wants to give you more faith to trust him around these corners of your life where you feel like, you know what, God, you can't use me there. Or it's a blind corner and you're thinking, man, I don't have faith enough to get around there. But if you trust in God, he's going to blow your mind. So we find ourselves now in uh, number two. Is it in you to connect with com community, not your own? 
And that's probably something that we don't, we're, we're kind of nervous about. Not too long ago, Pastor Edgar uh, encourages the church, challenged the church. Instead of just going home, make a left, go into the neighborhood. And start praying for this neighborhood across the street because of the things that were going on over there. And many of us that went there probably have never drove through that neighborhood. Now God is asking you today, are you willing to go to unfamiliar territory? I probably told this story before. I was at a conference, at an urban ministry conference. And I was sitting in this room and there was a bunch of guys that, that desired to do urban ministry. Going into like the neighborhoods where there's gangs and drugs, prostitution. And at the end of the table, there was a lady that raised her hand up. And she goes, I have a question. And the guy that was running the group says, oh, what's your question? He goes, how can I, Lily White, make better impact into this neighborhood that I'm in? The guy looked at her and goes, that's crazy. That's awesome. Your name is Lily White? And then she says, no. I'm just explaining who I am. I'm Lily White going into this neighborhood in Chicago where there's drugs and gangs. And when the people see me, they realize I'm an outsider. She was a lily white old lady and she takes other four to five other lily white old ladies into the neighborhoods where they were first unwelcome. Now they are welcome, but they're wanting to be more impactful in these neighborhoods. It blew us all away in this group. We're looking at everybody that was in there up opposite of her because we're all like we're some of us are tatted down we just looked the part to go into these neighborhoods but this lady that was so unassuming going into the neighborhoods just blew us away because she was willing to take the risk of just going to unfamiliar places but trusting in a God that would show them great and mighty things that they could never explain but know that God is the God that loves these people and they use these ladies and we find ourselves in Acts chapter 8, verses 4, and 4 to 8. There was great persecution that was happening in Jerusalem. Um, Philip was, ended up uh, leaving um, Judea, uh, Jerusalem. And it says here, Therefore those who have been scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria. You see, for a good Jewish boy like Philip, he couldn't just go into Samaria. That was a Jew, when the, Jew, the Jews and the Samaritans did not get along. For him to go there, he was going into unfamiliar territory. He could have easily went anywhere else, but he went to Samaria. And he says, and he began to proclaim Christ to them. You see, a lot of us, we think that when we go to these places, we have to be theologically sound. We need to, we need to know our scripture from Genesis to Revelation. We got to be very versed. No, just preach Christ. For if you're here today and you're a believer in Christ, you have a testimony. Tell them about the testimony of what Jesus did in your life. That's all they need to know. They may have some hard questions, but just preach Christ. Then it continues, then the crowds with one accord were giving attention to what was, Philip, what was said by Philip. And they heard and saw the sign which he was performing. For in in the case of many who were unclean, they were coming out of them shouting with a loud voice. Many who had been paralyzed and lamed and healed. So there was, was great or there was much rejoicing in the city. You see, when you go and you go for Jesus and you go and, and it doesn't matter and you trust in Jesus, there's going to be much rejoicing in the city. You see, you're adding hope to hopelessness. You're adding joy to sorrow. And that's what Jesus does in our lives. When he comes upon you and he lives in you, you do the things that Jesus would have done while he was on this earth. Because we become his hands and feet. Number three in your outline says this. Is it in you to just go and be blown away by an awesome God? This is one of the things that you may think, well, I'm not effective where I'm at now. But at the same time, you're wanting me to go to unfamiliar places. But this sounds like now you're calling me to be a missionary. You see, God has a progression in every believer's life. He doesn't just want you to stay here. He wants to keep you moving along to endeavor greater things that God wants to use you in. There was a day that I was walking. I was in this study and I was walking in the park. I was just asking God, okay, God, what do you want me to do? How do, you, how do you want your word to come alive to me as I'm walking in this park? How do, how, do I, how do you want me to witness here? What do you want me to do when I'm walking here? 
And I remember as I was at this park, we were walking, I was walking around and I seen this guy. We we're kind of going the opposite way. I run into him and I go up to him and I go, hey, how can I pray for you? He goes, I'm fine, thank you so much. And he just walked away. And I was like, as I was walking away, I said, all right. So I just started to pray for him. Second round, I see him again. We pass by. I said, hey, sir, I just got done praying for you. Just want to let you know. He goes, all right, thank you so much. And he walked away. So I said, okay, continue praying for him. This time when I, when I see him coming again, this time I'm, I'm just going to say, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to go, hey, what's up? That was it. About 10 yards away, as we're ready to walk past each other, he stops me and he goes, are you a minister or something? And I was like, no, kind of, well, not really. I'm just a believer in Christ, and I'm just compelled to do that. He goes, you know what, I have about like 40 minutes before my appointment. Come on, let's walk. So I end up walking around for the next half an hour talking to this guy. As I'm talking to him, he kind of tells me, hey, what nationality? I said, I'm Filipino. He goes, well, my wife was, uh, uh, was um, my first wife was Filipino. We have two awesome boys. Just starting to tell me his life. He was from Pakistan, and, and we're just talking. He goes, I'm, I'm Hindu. He goes, you know about Hinduism? I said, yeah, you know, you have uh, about, uh, you know, he was telling me, yeah, we have many gods, and we, and, but there's one true God. I, I believe, I, I, I know your religion. And as we're talking, I was telling him, yo, but I heard that you have millions of God, but there's only one true God. Can I tell you about the one true God that I want to tell you about? And you're probably thinking, man, there's going to be some, he's going to accept Christ. No, you know what I just did? I just planted a seed. Nothing happened. God has called us just to do that simple task. Drop the seed. Tell people and preach Christ. And that's what I did that day. After it was all over, I don't know what's going to happen, but I leave the result up to Jesus. All he wants me to do is be obedient to his call. And that's what he wants all of us to do. When we connect with our community, he just wants you to be obedient to his call. When you're driving through the, through the drive through pray for that lady that's taking your order. And when you get there and say, you know what, I was praying for you before you gave me my food, so God bless you. Just do it. Just do something that tells people that God is alive and he loves them. So in Acts uh, chapter 8 verses 26, Philip is now having this awesome ministry in Samaria where the city was following his teaching and they, were, they got baptized and the Holy Spirit fell upon that community. But now Jesus or, or God is telling him, but the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, get up. And go to the south road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. Other, tra other, other commentaries say this was also a deserted city that he was being sent to. And for a lot of us, we're probably thinking, no, Lord, this is not of you. Well, I'm prospering. The ministry is prospering over here in Samaria. But now you're telling me to go to a deserted city? You see, when we step out of our comfort zone... We step right into God's comfort zone. And when we start to obey Christ, we will even just say, I'm going to go to a place that is going to be untapped. But when I get there, God is going to be there. He's going to show me some awesome things. So number three in your out outline, it says, is it in you just to go and be blown away by an awesome God? And that's what he did. He's telling Philip, go to this deserted city. Go down to this desert road. And I'm going to show you something there. And then he goes. You see, a lot of us here today, we're probably thinking, man, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can step out of faith to just walk away from what I think is prospering to something that I may have to start from scratch. But check out this video. It's a three-minute video. Check this video out. Hi, we're Jeff and Christy Wilkie. We're with Youth with a Mission. And uh, we are some of your homegrown missionaries from Not Avenue Christian Church. Uh, I got saved at Not Avenue Christian Church in 1984. And I grew up in that church from the time I was two till we got married. So now we are in... Uh, with Youth with a Mission in Lakeside, Montana. And Youth with a Mission is an international missions organization. It's about 18,000 full-time members. And we have about 160 full-time staff here in Lakeside. Um, 
we, uh, we exist primarily to do training here. Uh, our motto is to know God and to make Him known. And uh, we primarily work with a, a, a school called a Discipleship Training School, or a DTS. It's a five-month program. We have students come from all over the world and train with us for three months here. We look at some basic Christian teachings, uh, have teachings on evangelism and prayer and Bible study and missions and uh, train them up as well as uh, get them prepared to go on cross-cultural outreaches. So then we, um, we take our teams for two months. We primarily focus on a few nations here at YWAM Montana. We, uh, we focus on India, Nepal, Thailand, Ukraine, and Taiwan. And so we have teams go to these nations and other nations. We take them and we do evangelism for two months in those nations. We work with orphanages. Uh, we work with uh, people, um, uh, with women that are involved in prostitution. Uh, we do teaching English, we work on campus ministries, we work with churches, we do anything to get the gospel out in these nations and other nations. Really one of our favorite parts of what we get to do is taking teams overseas. Especially right now, the harvest is ripe in the nations. And we think about when we first started, even taking Thailand for example, the first time we ever took a team there was in 1996. And we saw one or two people come to the Lord. But now in Thailand, every time we go there, we're seeing hundreds come to Jesus because of the seeds that have been sown by, by different teams and different missionaries over the, over the decades, over the centuries even. People who have been praying and sowing into Thailand. And it's a ripe season. So we love being in that nation and seeing people come to Jesus. So since we worked with DTS here for almost 19 years, we've had over 2,000 people join us in our schools. And, uh, and those guys are, we have several people as well who are, are working in nations long term from that. We love what we're allowed to do here. We're so thankful for you guys at uh, Not Avenue Christian Church who partner with us and have partnered with us for about 20 years. And uh, we just want to say thank you and thank you for your investment in us as a family. Well, we do have four children, uh, ages uh, 17 to uh, 6. And so uh, you guys have invested in our family as well as the ministry here at Youth with a Mission and in the nation. So we just, again, want to say thank you. Yeah, literally, we've been able to go all over the world preaching the gospel. And that's primarily because of your guys' support for us over the years. It's been almost 20 years that you guys have supported us and stood by us and even released us. And we're just grateful. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah, give it up, give it up. Jeff will be in the back uh, after the service is over. If you want to go shake his hand, tell him about uh, what's going on with that um, missions group. But one of the things that I heard, even in that video, is the idea of planting seeds. You see, team after team came to plant seeds. The first seed was the result of maybe two believers. Now hundreds of believers are coming to faith. And it takes the church to rise up and say, is it in you to just drop a seed? Let people know about the love of Christ and let God be, be the one um, dealing with the result of it. But you be obedient to dropping that seed. So we find Philip now in this desert road. Now he gets there and it says in um, Acts chapter 8 verses 27 to 30, 20, uh, 33 it says, So he got up and went and there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court of a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all the treasure, and he had come to Jerusalem to worship. When we're obedient to God, sometimes it just becomes as easy as that. You go to a place where you feel like, man, nothing can ever happen good here. But when you cover it with prayer, you cover it with your obedience to Christ, you get a divine appointment in this Ethiopian. And then it continues to say, and as he was returning and sitting in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go up and join the chariot. It's just getting easier. He's reading the scriptures. He just gets done worshiping in Jerusalem. And now the spirit of, of God is telling him, come, go join him. And he says, go and join this chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet. And he says, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, well, how could I unless someone guides me? You see, sometimes when we're sharing Christ, it can be as easy as that. It may just be a fruit that God is giving us that is easily picked because the harvest is ready. But he's calling the church to rise up and saying, are you willing to be obedient and continue to be in my mission field? Whether locally, 
whether it be in your community or in the world. Then he says, and he invited Philip to come up to sit with him. And now the passage of the scripture, which he was reading, was this. He, led, he, was, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter. A lamb before a cheer is silent. And so he does not open his mouth. The passage that he was in scripture was the passage in Isaiah where he was talking about Jesus ready to die on the cross. And then in Acts chapter 8, verses 34 to 35, the eunuch answer, answered Philip and said, Please tell me, whom does this prophet say this? Or, or of himself or someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and began from the scriptures. He preached Jesus to him. How easy is that? How easy is it for somebody to accept Jesus Christ like that? Going to a place where nothing was happening and God made a divine appointment where something is about to happen in, in, ma in, a, in a massive way. And he preaches Jesus. For, the, for us here today, you know you have a testimony. And that testimony is just to preach Jesus, nothing else. What Jesus has done in your life. And in Acts chapter 3, chapter 8, verses 36 to 38, it says, As they went along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? It gets even easier. Now the person that he's talking to is now requesting Jesus and now requesting to be baptized. And then Philip says this, if you believe with all of your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop and they both went down into the water. And Philip, as well as the eunuch, was baptized. And he baptized him. Sometimes it's as easy as that, church. That God just wants us to be obedient. He says it is in you to do such a thing. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's nothing to be af for fear. It's about being obedient. And God has called us to be obedient. You see, when we think about when we, when we preach or we're, where we serve our community, what is familiar to us, that can be easy because those people know you. But when God starts to move in you and he wants you to go more into an unfamiliar place to tell people about Christ, that's where we start to depend on him even more. And then when he moves you into a place where you don't think anything can happen or any good can come out of it, that's where we hold on to him more. So you see the progression. Something local, something into an unfamiliar community. Now when this Ethiopian left, he says he left rejoicing. He was a high-ranking official in Ethiopia. And what Philip did there is not only impact this Ethiopian but when this Ethiopian goes back to his hometown, this Ethiopian will impact a nation. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants you to stop, start dropping these seeds of, of Christ, preaching Christ to people. So not only is it going to impact you here, it's going to impact you for all eternity. After service was over, the other uh, last service, a lady came up to me and said, you know what, Albert, I used to be one of those ones that really didn't convict people by my life. I kind of condemned them, but I used to always try to be the best uh, person to relay the gospel to people. And then one day, God started to change my heart and started to preach differently. So I started preaching to a friend of mine and started telling him about the love of God, but also there was another person that was there that overheard it in, a, in kind of like a, a secondary kind of conversation because he was on the side listening. Later on, he ended up going to a Christian college, became a pastor. Because you never know what will happen, guys, when you continue to share the scripture. You see, there's some of us in here today, you're probably like that Ethiopian eunuch. You're here to worship. And you're in... You're in your chair today thinking of one thing. I don't really understand about this Jesus quite yet. Not ready to step in to this relationship with Jesus Christ. But Jesus is here to tell you, just take that one step towards him and he'll take that step towards you. And there's some of us in here today that has not made that step and I want to pray for you. So let's just pray, church. Father, I just want to just thank you. Thank you, Father God, that your gospel, Father God, is alive. You use people to spread your gospel. And I pray, Father God, today that there is somebody in here that does not know you. 
that realizes today, Lord God, that you want to know them. So I pray, Father God, that you would just speak to the very heart. And that's you today. All you have to do is just pray the simple prayer. Father, forgive me. I realize that I live my life apart from you, but I want to live my life with you now today. That I would follow you from this day forward. That you would encourage me with a guy like a Philip that would teach me and show me what this Christianity will look like. So today, Lord God, I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. And this, from this day forward, I want to follow you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This has been a Not Avenue Christian Church video production. If you'd like information about Not Avenue Christian Church, or after giving to your home church you feel led to contribute to Not Avenue Christian Church, please visit our website at www.kacc.com. We thank you for watching and hope you'll join us again.